What's going on guys, all of Blitzel here, and today I'm back with an uncut gameplay video for Dracovish. This is the exact same 60 that I featured in my Knoxville video yesterday, uh, so definitely check out what I have to say about it um, in, in that video um, if you haven't already. And I really wanted to uh, reinforce uh, that I do believe that this is a, a viable deck by showing it off in s s some games today, and I was very glad that I did because the deck performed fabulously if I do say so myself. So we're on to the first game already, and we are up against Reggie's, which is a very great matchup for us. Um, we, The only sort of issue can, can be is if our opponent plays that Astral Radiance for Regilecki and can get that turn to um, Regilecki attack and snipe our only Ice Q. So we have to, we're on somewhat of a clock because we don't play Mana Fee like other um, Ice Q decks do, but uh, we, I'll just put the water on and, and, and pass. And we're, if our opponent can't find uh, can't find that Astral Radiance, we're lucky to snipe our guy. Then all, all we need to do is find a twin, and then we pretty much have it from there. So our opponent puts a big research, so that's that's always always good for us because that means they have no like, quick ball or in their hands. I don't think they dropped any energies either. So there's a heavy ball. Finding a duplicate Reggie. They're definitely a heavy ball before the shoes. Just have maximum information going into that trekking shoes. It's definitely a sequencing error by my opponent. There is a there's an Astral Radiance Regilecki, so not great. There's gonna be a rod back in two Reggies. I think my opponent's still lacking quite a bit of energies and still needs nets. This could be a very um, insane uh, Dragon's Horde, which you have to have like Aurora and Net, which looks like my opponent does not have. So yeah, he's gonna pump the energies to the active and pass. We need to find that twin energy. I'm going to pull this first and thin the deck out. Then I'm going to use uh, Pokey Gear. It does not hit. I'll use Mysterious Tail. Which I can grab Scoo or I can have Fan of Waves, which can be kind of annoying here. And then I did all that thinning out, so I have maximum odds of hitting this twin. Just do everything else first. And then if all else fails, then go for the po Pokey Stop. But now we have the Silver Ice Cube Block Face. And even if our opponent plays Gellhorn, we have the rare fossils in hand that we can. A bench and then retreat into them or retreat and then use uh, Mew and then scoop, scoop about that Mew and I'm playing the Lost City in, in this list like the list I feature from my Knoxville video so I can just Lost on their Ashley and Regilecki and then they're out of Yale Horns and then we don't need any more switching cards so we're moving into the Regilecki so it'll be interesting to see if they have a Yale Horn or not or they're just going to go for the scoop of net like cycle kind of play that is sort of delaying the inevitable because unless uh, yeah it's I like that's what they're gonna go for. Not a whole lot I have to do. I fail that. I will Serena. I don't. I, I just want to see a few more cards just so I am prepared if Yellhorn does come down. But I, uh, yeah, my opponent's just gonna be going net. He's a net the active, and they're just probably gonna keep continually going for this scoop of net loop play, which is very annoying to go up against. But it doesn't. It takes a while, which is annoying. But it doesn't actually do anything. Like, eventually he's going to lose to the run out of manual attachments or just eventually bleed six prizes. So, yeah, it does. He's gonna be wasting both of our time unless he has a yellow horn. Which is fine because I can show you guys the. As long as that you don't need to over commit resources and you should just be able to win this one fairly, fairly simply, but it's alright. I'd rather fit more games in this time instead of just watching a Reggie's uh, screw up net loop for 20 more turns until they deck out but it is what it is this is where it'd be nice to have uh some more sped up cut up gameplay but this is not that kind of video so you take you get the highs and the lows with these kinds of videos and this is definitely one of the lows so they're gonna retreat and just keep on keeping on this is uh if you want to put this into double speed until uh until the next game i wouldn't blame you because this is going to last a while, and there's not a whole lot I'm going to be doing. I'm just be announcing block face every turn, and my opponent is just going to be spamming that sonar until they eventually deck out. Because I have way more cards than my opponent, and they're still like, looping. Like they're still playing the game. I can try to Marnie and force my like opponent to miss net for a turn, but he didn't commit too many of them early on setting up. So yeah, I'm just gonna. I mean, him, him digging is sort of a sign that. He could be playing Yellhorn and trying to find it, but I don't know. 
another big retreat and then there's a permanent or a ancient wisdom and then another sonar so yeah this is just should i keep announcing block face eventually we will win this game but it's going to take a little bit because my opponent is being very stubborn which is fine because i have an hour i don't have to i don't have any place i need to be but he's wasting his own time here because i think he should realize that he doesn't have anything he can do so i will play the fan of waves here because you know what gives him an, an extra card it forces him to either either use ancient wisdom or yeah commit an energy from his hand so i at least force an extra energy to go and there is a ancient wisdom and then another sonar so yeah this is just very fun and interactive game opponent doesn't have any nets down i'm just gonna try to hit him without a net and just try to maybe speed this up a little bit i still have way more cards left than the name i have nine more cards i'll put extra energy on just in case they are playing galhorn so i can retreat into a rare fossil or something well my my hope was that maybe i could block face them and then they would have to like they get this ready and active spot but they wouldn't hit not but that of course did not work out for us so yeah this is very fun I should put some um, put, put some timestamps in this video so you can skip past this part. I, I apologize, guys. This is not not exactly ri riveting gameplay here, but I promise you the matches do get better. Just bear with me. Um, so yeah, we're just, we topped like the velocity, but the mapping keep of toughness is gonna make things even longer because they can tank one more block face. So <laughs> this goes from uh painful to even more painful i just would i'd like it if my opponent would just leave a red in the extra spot and they just lost on it and just end this silly game but i'm just gonna keep on block facing and there's a net like the, the, this strategy like stalls things out and maybe in best of three swiss you could do this for 15 minutes straight but eventually on tcgo you're gonna run out of your uh, 17 minute timer there doing your actions every turn and maybe you could work on like a limitless tournament because you could uh, run the 30 minute clock down because I have basically no way to aggressively beat you so it, yes it could work but it's like the best outcome possible to tie you're never gonna win so honestly I don't know why it just won't be this guy like if you have no win, win condition like I'm not saying just always scoop when you're going to lose because sometimes you can learn a lot from you learn more from losing than you do winning, but this is just pointless. Like you're not gaining anything from this. You're just wasting your own time that you could be doing something more constructive. So it's okay. Do I sound salty? Hopefully not. <laughs> so there's another Zonar. This seems familiar. They just grab that cape and then they grab the net and it's just gonna go on forever and ever. I maybe could have squeezed in a Marnie there, but I'm just gonna wait until my opponent decks out. Like I have way more, I have way more cards than my, my opponent. So eventually he's gonna deck out. And as soon as that, that happens, the sooner I win this game, the sooner we can move on to a more fun and interactive game. Well, not the Draco Vish is the most fun and interactive deck ever. It's based, it's a definitely a wall deck, which is you will you'll definitely get games like this, and that's like sort of your average typical game. But it's not exactly fun gameplay to watch. Uh, I mean, like at least against Lugi, when they can't do anything, you're still like, <laughs> uh, you're still getting closer to a win condition, and it's not like they're just stalling it for uh, forever. So I don't know. We'll get to the Lugi and Mew games later, where we can showcase the Dragovish. But now this is Ice Q's shining moment to block face for 2,000 damage. We're going to set a new world record for most damage by a water Pokemon in a single game. Look for that. Look for my clickbait thumbnail title or the Guinness World World Record logo and everything, and then you'll be sufficiently clickbaited. <laughs> uh, so they're gonna keep sonaring. I'm just gonna keep using block face. Ten more turns. So I don't think they can possibly get eight more cards in deck than me, even if they do use um, like ordinary rod. They'd still be having to lose cards like play Ultra Ball down Reggies or Aurora down Reggies. So it'd still eventually be basically like a net neutral on cards or even negative. So unless they have like a ton of rods and they ever have to 
leave that Reggie not to spot for more than one turn, like getting back Rods or Marnies to uh, keep recovering. Then we can lost City this, and then we can move on with our lives. But uh, Mr. Torchic, uh, Master Torchic 69 here does not have anything better to do with his time, which is a bit unfortunate, but um, yeah, it's all right. We will keep on going. So yeah, there's a sonar. Yeah, I did. I, I think I'll be using the Marnie, but not really much of a point. Like, the sooner my opponent decks out, the sooner this game is over, and the sooner we can move on. So there's a, another net. And let me guess. Oh, a double net. Wow, that's a, that's a bit of a new uh, big brain. Um, extremely professional play by my opponent. Oh, we're going to ultra out some Reggie's and start putting some more stuff into the deck. That is extremely exciting. I am happy that my opponent is doing this. Wow. <laughs> so there is Sonar once again, and guess what, I'm going to use Block Face, I know none of you saw that coming, but that's what we're going to do here, it's kind of a very complex play here where I just press the button and hope that my opponent presses the button in the top right here soon because they have nothing they can do, but that's okay, hopefully there's, <laughs> hopefully this game's over soon, come on opponent, you have nothing to play for. You're wasting both of our time. At least it's not like spamming emotes. Like, that'd be even worse. I have had that happen before. Especially when you're playing a more trolly deck like Dracovish. Some people just seem to have a real, like... You don't send any, like, emotes in chat or whatever. And then, like, when they beat you, like, because you like, bricked or something, they just, like, spam emotes against you. Like, what does that prove? Like, I don't know who... Who said something mean to you today, but I'm sorry. And if you ever face me and I feel the need to spam emotes against me... You could just go on my YouTube and go in the description and check out my email and send me an email if you have anything you need to, to, to talk about because I'm more than happy to discuss your problems with you. Just It doesn't do anything to be disrespectful to someone in a PTCGO chat. Just I'm just saying for all the people out there because for someone who plays Control and Wall Decks a lot, I'm definitely the subject to a decent amount of harassment on the PTCGO um, emotes and messages. Lots of woo that was close is when I bricked out and they drew four prizes before I even played a supporter card, but that's what happens when you play your control, I guess. But I'm not, not condoning that behavior, but just don't, don't, don't be that that guy. So we're getting close. Two cards left. I promise you, this one's nearly over. There's that. Let me guess, they're going to retreat into the Regilecki and Sonar for a Cape of Toughness. Uh, let's see. I'm a wizard. <laughs> so, guess what? I'm a block face. Ice Q is going to set the new world record for damage. Place your comments now. How many, how much damage do you think Ice Q is going to have done by the end of this game? I'm going to say 2,500 something. So, there's a sonar. Hand. Oh, they're equipped with Agent net. Wow! This is next level play by my opponent. Very complex decision making. Let me guess, they're gonna quick ball out of Reggie, then quick ball out another Reggie, and then ordinary rod them back in. Which doesn't matter, because I have six cards left in my deck. Oh, they're using a roar energy, not a quick ball. Oh, that's a smart call by my opponent. Oh, and it's arena, not even quick ball. Why'd you grab quick ball then, opponent? Please just let me let, let me loss to you. Please. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Master Torchic. I really appreciate it. Yay, we can move on with our lives. Yes, Franny face it up, dude. We did it. Together, through the power of courage and friendship, we made it through this game. It was only possible because of your guys' support. Oh, only 2,170 damage. Well, if you would've kept going, we, we, we would've got there, but. Ooh, we get a shiny Luminion V from the ladder. Not, yeah, so. Uh, I already got plenty of those, but. Oh, well. Not as in sh a shiny aluminium, but as in a shiny new card. We're against Mcurie227. Got it. Let's build it well, hopefully we can move on from this and just build a nice big win streak out of this. So mulligan. It, it'd be cool if like the old fossil cards, where you could like choose to, to mulligan if you didn't want to start it. That would be kind of interesting. Because this hand is probably one I would mulligan. I don't know. It's not a horrible hand, but it would definitely be. I just think it's great if I can find a fossil. But also if I'm in an ice cube matchup, I do have Ultra Ball. Arcanine. Well, this video is just all sorts of special. 
Is there an Ultra Ball? Is Robin Ice Cube? Mysterious Tail. Also, is kind of cool because it means I don't just lose my Ice Cube to an escape rope. So then we, we pass. This is just all sorts of awesome. This is a Stone Energy. Oh my goodness. Ultra Ball for my opponent. Got the Mana Fee. I believe that was another Arcanine. They got Zapdos. We need to find that Wash Energy. So we are not susceptible to that paralysis breaking our block face lock they're definitely going for an aggressive boss early on oh man so this could be battle they find boss if i ice cube's prize that'd be that'd be quite the uh debilitating loss but that's all right they just never hit it you try you just gotta believe it believe in the, in the heart of the cards there's your irresistible force Arcanine would be cool in like a slower format. I think it probably would be a viable deck. If you take out Lugia and Lost Box and even even Mew, I thought Arcanine would be a very strong deck. But what's funny is the way Power Creep has kind of worked in the TCG. Like, I don't think Zor I think Zora GX, like if you just like Zora GX is one of the most dominant cards of all time. But if you throw it in this format, it's objectively a bad card. Like it would not see any play. And I think that like Pokemon have been so power creep and juiced up. Did not take that knock. Oh, he's a fighting energy short. Um, but like trainer cards have been like sort of power corrupt in the opposite direction. Like you think about some of the OP trainer cards from uh, older formats. Like, I mean, even like trainers mail and acro bike, which were relatively um, which were tame compared to the puzzle of times and other things of the world. Definitely should have geared and tailed before that lotto. Miss sequencing by, by myself. Oh well. Um, we, found, we find that twin. We just need Pokestop to find net for us. Let's go, Pokestop. You are the best. So now we are a little susceptible to paralysis, but our ice cube cannot get gusted up. So never punish for sequencing incorrectly. Um, as I was saying with uh, p p Power Creep, like you'll get some of the support, the items from X and Y, and even Sun and Moon, like Battle Compressor, Acro Bike, Trainer's Mail. And I guess I don't like the ball search cards because like having, I, I don't necessarily mind having super OP uh, stable uh, ball search cards because um, 2019 Worlds format was like the one format where you didn't have like any ball search cards. We just had like net, we had ultra space and net ball and that was pretty much it and cherish ball. So that format was kind of cringe. It was, it was sort of, I did like that format. I liked Guardian in that format, but. It was I it wasn't a that's how we fun format to play. It was a lot more complex, but like some of the decks were just like I don't know. I don't mind having powerful ball search cards, but like I don't know. It's like the power crap, like the items, like enhanced hammer getting some of that with with fan of waves or yell grunt being instead of um, team flare grunt or extra rosic or some of the more disruptive supporters of the past. I think it's an interesting direction that Pokemon has gone because. Uh, like they power up po the, the Pokemon so much higher than uh, really ever like L Lugia, Palkia, Mew or some of those OP cards ever printed but the trainer cards have really gone back like they've really been very skittish about printing powerful disruption cards which I don't necessarily uh, mind that too much because it, it means you have to be a little more creative with deck building and stuff like that which isn't necessarily the worst thing in the world but i think that like sometimes the scale is tipped too far in one direction where like the super offensive aggro decks are just super strong and then the control wall decks things like that have so much less to work with or just playing with old technology basically which is a bit frustrating sometimes so there's a switch but we got the wash energy so this will not work Arcanine is pretty fun though. I think it would I think it'd be a fun deck to try and expand with like elixirs and I don't know if you could go like turbo like gutsy pickaxe and elixir. Could be a fun one to try. And if you guys would like to see expanded on the channel, it's something that I don't really play. I mostly just play standard. But I do I do I would like to experiment with expanded some. So if that's something that you guys like to see, uh, let me know in the comments because I would really if that's some content that you guys would like to watch, then I'm more than happy to create it. So there's a zapper kick, but did not read wash energy, so all his energies are wasted. 
And Ice Cube is having his moment here. He's had two back-to-back -back games where he's been the MVP. Yep, and a concession. That's two in a row for, for Ice Cube. So that's, that's awesome. So we're moving on to the next one. If the ladder will find us in front, it, it does. All right, we're against William Fang. Let's see, can we keep our win streak at two alive this one? And call the coin. It's not that hard. Heads or tails. There we go. You did it. You pressed the heads button. That was a good choice. So he'll be choosing most likely to go first, which would be not great for us. We always prefer to go first with this deck. That hand would have been one I would not have mulliganed if I could have. But oh well. We do not have that option anymore. This hand's not spectacular. I really need this gear to hit, or I'm feeling pretty bad. That was Mew, so we definitely need to get a turn one. Dracovish, or this game is over. The the margin for error with this deck is like exactly zero sometimes, so. If you miss, you go second, miss that Dracovish, you pretty much lose. So I can make for some quick games on both ends because you can get some, you get really quick scoops because your opponent has no win condition. And sometimes you just scoop really early. Finding Marnie isn't the greatest thing ever. I, I do, yeah, we, we, we have a couple of mysterious tales. So we find the boost shakes. We are able to uh, get this Dracovish down. Don't even need Marnie, which is awesome. That's why we went for those nets before the Marnie to hopefully um, find a, a fossil and a boost shake, which we did. So we didn't even need Poke Stops. That was an excellent setup by us. And now we just don't drop any Pokemon to the discard pile that can get Echoing Horned. And we just sit here and wait for our opponents to press the button in the top right. Or we just can slowly hammer in for the win if our opponent does not want to make things easy for us. I, I, I think in this moment, my, pro my opponent's probably trying to play down his, his Mewby Max and then he reads my, my active Pokemon. Probably thinks that, that Big Parasol would help him, but it will not because Big Parasol does not block effective abilities. And the, the effect on, is on his hand anyway. Or is it on his hand? I think the effect of Primal Law. Would it affect on the hand or on the. No, it would be the effect on the Pokemon. Actually, it depends on the text because if, if it. Ironic can't evolve any of their Pokemon in play, or they can't fling their evolutions from their hand. Huh. I need to read my, my my cards, I guess. Either way. So, like, amazing, like, Stealthy Hood and Expanded would mean it, you could evolve under Dracovish. I think you, you could. So, yeah, it's an effect on the Pokemon, so. Um, I apologize. So, yes, Reven and there's a concession. So, three in a row. And finally, we, we got to showcase Dracovish. Um, definitely not as much as his comrade Ice Cube, but he at least got a moment in, in the spotlight. So we're on to, to our next game, hopefully soon. Three game win streak, that's keep it, keep it going. The ladder was kind of slow today, which is a bit annoying when you're trying to record and you don't like a whole lot of downtime in between games and you have to talk to fill up that gap, but that's... All right, when against Name Not Cow, that name sounds familiar. I feel like I've probably faced him on ladder multiple times before. And we lose a coin flip. That's not good. So we're going to be going second in all likelihood. Yep. This hand's not great. Like, we have the boost shape, but we're pretty much just going to be marning because we don't have very many other pieces in this hand. And it's a Lugia, so we have to establish that, that um, Dracovish turn one. And going second, so we have very little margin for error. In fact, that margin of error is pretty much zero. So we still need three cards net, actually, just two net and fossil. Attachment would be nice, but it's not necessary. So we draw Serena's not helpful. Opening Pump Boo is pretty nice. Doesn't mean our opponent needs a little more to get that turn to attack. Uh, and it does give us a little more time if we were to whiff attachment. Incense for the Archaeops. Ultra Ball. Is this a double Archaeops? Oh, no, it's not. Okay. That's... I feel like every time you face Lugia on Ladder, they always have double, d double Archaeops. It's just a fact. Um, top deck gear is sort of interesting. Don't need a rod. Oh, gear for Chorus for sure. 
Oh, uh, we hit fossil. I think we want lotto and gear. I will then gear to thin out the, this coal rest. We don't need it. I want lotto because I need to find net off of this. Uh, mysterious tail, and we did not. So that is very bad. So I'm going to drop both of our fossils. We kind of have to hope with a three card hand, this isn't necessarily the worst thing ever because we can boost shake and our opponent would need a very specific uh, four card hand to be able to, to uh, really punish us. They would need to have Lugia V-Star and boss, which isn't the most specific hand ever, but uh, it would pretty much be GG if they had that combo of cards. But this isn't... At least we got Dragovish in play in, in the active spot. Capture for the Warring Guru belt. So that, all right. So they don't, they don't have it. Yep. Here's the research. So we managed to get out of that. So we just need to find a net on this turn, and and we can just start swinging with, with, with hammer in. There's a quick ball out the Archeops. In hindsight, maybe we could have held the the Dracovish to evolve. There's not fans. A nice find. There's Ultra Ball. And that, so that's just awesome. We can net up the Mew. Would be a bit of a shame if our opponent played Echoing Horn, which you do occasionally see in, in Lugia. We already discarded our rod, but we can't be too picky at this point. We have to have to, to do that. I'm not playing the fan of waves because I don't necessarily need to yet. I could get punished by a Marnie, but I I sort of want to wait and maybe see if my opponent drops a, a double turbo or some more valuable energy I can put on the bottom. I don't necessarily need to do it because they're not right at the attack. So they could get rid of a path. And it was nice to set up that second Draco Vish as well because we have to set up two. Otherwise, our opponent can um, use Radiant Charizard to get through our one Draco Vish. So, uh, yeah, I definitely punished for not playing those fans. I should have played that, that fan because now this Lugia is pretty close to attacking us, which is definitely very scary. Um, yeah. All right, Pokey Gear, find Chorus. And there is Chew, I definitely grab those three cards. Don't need the Boost Shake or Nat anymore. Serena's is a, a, a nice find, so I'll hammer in and take this knockout. There is definitely a debate I could have just passed and then just gone for a Gust and hit into that, that Lugia so I get the first hit on it always. It also isn't guaranteed that my opponent has double turbo. Uh, I guess not, it is guaranteed. <laughs> so we are going to get hit by that by that Lugia v, v, but we're not going to get knocked out by it, which is pretty cool. It would be bad if I run Gust that bench Draco Vish, because we would have to use Scoop Net on it. But nope, just definitely should have probably Luminion for boss to Gust the, the, the bench guy. There's an Arrow Dive for 110. I need to find some fans. I guess, huh. I have three fans in deck. I, I, I want more cards though, because I could just like Gust Trap the Bench Lugia V, but I just want cards. Like, then my hand's still dead, and it's just kind of pushing the problem down further. So, this is a bit risky for us because there is always a chance that my opponent has their other double turbo in hand or can, has the means to find the one that we put on the bottom. But it, I definitely feel a little better about this. And then they do attach it to the Bench guy, so that is admitting defeat on this Lugia. I find that Radiant Charizard is definitely pretty scary. We're just going to read the wind. We can attach to our bench Dra Draco Vish. Gear fail. And I'll just hammer in for the knockout. I don't want to use Pokestop yet because there is potentially a chance where a deck out might come into the equation. I don't want to just be super aggressive um, getting rid of my cards where I don't necessarily need to. But if I do, if it do urgently need to find a, a fan, I might um, start using the Pokestop. And this is that definitely that occasion I was just talking about because uh, the, we need to make sure we have two Draco Vish in, in, in place so Lugia can't just beat us. They can't go Lugia Radiant Charizard, right? I mean. So we find our other Serena off the prizes. That's awesome. They promote the Radiant Charizard. So this is going to take the Combustion Boss knockout. So we can just knock out with Hammer in. And then we just need one more prize. So cool. We're just two attacks away from winning. We have that Serena to chase down whoever they put up. And an attachment. And you read the wind. So I'm still gonna, gonna poke you up to try to find some fans just for that little extra insurance. Definitely could be the an argument made that I didn't need to do that. And like if they had chance care or something, I could have got punished for that. But 
Yeah, probably was a little greedy on my part. It's definitely not a whole lot of reward for the risk that I took. But still, I think we're, we're, we're fine. You don't see Jaren's care that often in Lugia. They're going to vacuum out our Pokestop. But still not a whole lot they, they can do. I guess they can hope that we don't have Gust and like re retreat in between a bunch of their guys. But that's just kind of just delaying the inevitable. And we have the we have the Serena. We can just Gust down that Lugia V and take this game. So... Dracofish really taking some names today. We got to take out Reggie's Lugia and Mew. And we got to show off the, the Dracofish part of the deck and the ICU part. So, pretty good. And we got 150 coins, too. That's also pretty good. So, we just need to, we need to place a Lost Box to, to complete the, the cycle. So, we're... Come on, Tisha Geo is not that hard. Find us a game. Always seems that no one is playing when you're recording, and when you're not recording, you find matches instantaneously. But here we are. We are into another one against Pond Dambo, I think. We won the quad flip. That's pretty good. And we mulligan, which is not surprising. We have a 43% chance of mulliganing. This hand's actually not too bad. We have the fossil and the, what is this? Stone and path, VIP, double turbo, I'm confused. Yveltal, this is puzzling. Do I fence ice Q and load it up or go for the Draco Fish? I think we're gonna go Draco Fish. Um, we'll grab net and just pass. So we had we have a pretty good first turn and a pretty solid hand. It's, oh, it's an Aerodactyl deck. Ah, oh, Marnie is a bit unfortunate. Our hand was quite insane. Draw a couple fossils and so yeah, Dracofish was definitely the right call because now they can't evolve their uh, Aerodactyl if we get this down. I don't want to ultra out the fossils though because it's probably Aerodactyl V is a solid and decently efficient attacker in this matchup. So we. We're gonna need more than one Draco Fish. Oh, we just helped that guy. Perfect. Oh, smart Marnie, though. I don't want to leave myself with just a fossil on the bench. No twin energy. Maybe we can find a lotto. Nope. So put on the other, other wash, fan back the energy net, and then pass. So then we can just put on the water and then hammer in and start rolling. Wash energy is pretty cool because uh, the Lugia, or not Lugia, the Yveltal can't cry destruction is. So they find that backup attachment, which is not good. Capturing Aroma, the best card in the game. Always find the right thing. So it found their actual V star, which is very useful in this particular instance. So, yep, we just gonna start swinging. We are a bit susceptible to a to the Aerodactyl here because we don't have fans. And so they find a stone energy. We're not in a great spot. And they do. So, this is not great. We need to ideally find double fan and probably establish a benched, uh, a benched uh, red fossil. Striking shoes is a nice find. Pokey stop is a nice find. Okay, we will be using Chorus this turn. No fans, but we do. Yikes. We need to find a fossil at this Pokey stop at the very least. No. Oh, goodness. Well,. I think we, we get rid of the double turbo over the, the stone because they have less double turbos because these rock crush. But they find one of their other three double turbos. This game is over. I could have benched a Mew, but I feel pretty bad about that. I feel just as bad as benching a Mew as I do just them hitting. Like if, if, if I bench that Mew and then they gust up and evolve, then I feel like I'm losing too, so. It was kind of a gamble, but I think if we're benching, we were losing the game anyway, so I don't... I'm right, just going to be going for bite. Hopefully, we, we can find a, a fan so we can take this knockout. Uh, there is a gear. Gear. I probably should have geared before the tracking shoes within these supporters. Yikes, we'll be looking for a fossil once again, it appears. Sending a Pokestop and a gear to the Lost Zone. Please, Dak, give me a fossil. Nope. So, looks like we'll be loading up Ice Q to finish off this, this Aerodactyl. Just how we drew it up. 
So I'm gonna Ultra Ball out Lotto and Rod. I could have probably got rid of the Dracovish, but um, I didn't, <laughs> so I did not. So we're gonna hammer in for 100. We didn't find Fan or Fossil, so we'll have to block face for this knockout on the next turn. And hopefully the opponent doesn't find Aerodactyl attachment. Otherwise, we're probably going to lose. But I've, all right, they, they go for that Poke Stop and mill a Stone Energy, so that's great for us. There's a Serena. Definitely don't need those Battle VIPs anymore. We're still hoping for no. Yes, capturing a room with the best card in the, the game always works out just how you you plan it to. <laughs> and there's the that double turbo energy, but it's a bit late. So, if our opponent is going to bite us for the knockout, no, they're going to touch another stone. Why? Oh well, we will just take it out and no, we wasting energy. We don't mind at all because like. Icy Snow is only doing 20 anyway, so that first stone cancels it out. I'm not going to Marnie them because their hand is kind of weak. I probably should have, though. Until I try to dig toward a fossil. I don't know. I, I think what, how I played it is fine, though, because they didn't have... It was obviously not very strong. So there is a Judge. There is Fossil and Attachment, so we're definitely going to be trying to establish this next Dracovish. But Ice, you can still put a, a little pressure in the meantime. And it looks like it'd be like quad aerodactyl with a couple of orangus. Maybe it's not even that many aerodactyls. Maybe it's just like a 2 2 line or 3 3 or something. So, block face for 70. Hopefully, we can find a water energy next turn so we can start um, using the Dracovish once again. But let's see. A rope. That's kind of annoying. And a Marnie. So lots of hand disruption, like hand disruption path, aerodactyl, certainly an interesting concept. We have ultra ball and fan and attachment, so pretty optimal draw. I will screw up and net up this ice cube, ultra ball, lotto, and ice cube. We're out of that Dracovish. And then we have just enough energies for one more Dracovish this game. I'll fan back that twin, that double turbo, and then we will hammer in for the knockout. So we are getting close. I skipped the prizes isn't useful at all, but there's another double turbo. And let's see, yeah, anything else? Nope, so this is great for us because even though I'm sort of susceptible to Aerodactyl, I know my opponent's drawing that Orangaroo card they put on top and that's likely not a very good card, but maybe it was a good card. <laughs> they have the Marnie, so I don't know. Forget that I said anything. So, hopefully this doesn't find stone energy. There are done two stones and a fighting, or three stones, I think. So my opponent is in shock. So then I'm going to do, I don't even need to bench this fossil. Because it, if they were to gust it up and knock it out, I'd be in a horrible spot. So don't even need the risk here. Because we can do two, uh, 120 and then we're just be able to follow it up with hammer on the next turn regardless. Because that wash energy does mean that their energy a discard from boulder crush doesn't even matter so yep they do concede and that is five in a row i believe yes it is so we are moving right up on the ladder you just see that uh little notification in, in the top right of my pdcgo i think my opponent sent me a friend request after that game i thoroughly enamored him with my draco fish deck <laughs> so let's see how far we can get, get get this win streak will this video turn into a play till we we lose video. That'd be quite ex exciting. So against Hyper Jolts, 37. With the Solgaleo coin, and we're going first. That's awesome. His hand is not the greatest, but we can work with this. Comfy. Okay, we need to find Ice Cube this, this turn. <laughs> nope. Pokey Gear is not helpful. Pokey Gear. <laughs> Not really the card I'm looking for right now, but we can try to thin some stuff out. I need these two mysterious tails to be nice. Okay, Ultra Ball gets, gets me Ice Cube, so I'd like this second Mew to find me Energy Lotto. Actually, I think I'm okay just passing because the odds that I find Wash are already incredibly low. 
I, I don't know. I think I maybe I could have dug for it, but also uh, I don't want to leave my I don't want to use all my nets early, so I can't pick up my Meeves later. So it's sort of interesting because my opponents could build up their loss in these first few turns, and then if I don't get a washed ice cube down quick enough, I still could lose. Or what if my opponent just gets seven in the loss zone and goes for Moonlight Shuriken? That'd be very unfortunate. But I've seen it happen before. So there's a flower selecting. It does not need the VIP pass. It's definitely a sign that their hand is quite strong. So there's another flower selecting. Had the second VIP pass. Wow. So there's a rope. My opponent's definitely putting the, the cards in the loss zone, which is not good. At least I don't have a ton of nets. But three is definitely troubling. There's a heavy ball. Fresh Snorlax. Hopefully they don't have a Chorus in that hand. A Ranger on the bench. Uh, that's sort of a, a good sign that they don't have it yet. They probably wouldn't put a card on top if they had a Chorus in hand. Maybe this is just wi wishful thinking. <laughs> so, do they, you have it? Or are you just trolling me? And there's pass. Okay. So we're going to be using Ultra Ball out. A Chorus and a, a Draco Vish. I'll grab Ice Q. We did prize a Wash Energy, so that's a bit tough. I guess we're going to Lost Zone. Draco Vish and a Boost Shake. MG Lotto, please. Alright. Wash Energy, please. No. Twin is still fine, though. They'll have a 3 into the Lost Zone, so they'll probably they, they put 7 in there without a first turn Chorus. I'd say it's pretty low, so I don't mind this too much. And I didn't want to net back into the other Mew and Mysterious Tail again, because I would need to have two nets to clear my board, and I would only have one net left, so that would be obviously not super good. But no, I, I still have two left, it'd be harder to, to find. So I think that is the correct call, I, don't, I have to be pretty cautious with my resources. So we just need to find that wash energy. Switch cart, which is always better than screw up now for us. So that means I can't use that comfy again. Let's be up to five in the lost zone. Out of Mirage Gate. Capture energy, that might find Cramorant. It does. So there is a Cramorant. And you, so they're gonna spit and take out this. I, you always should just Oranguru though but before you go into the Cramorant because you could draw a Chorus. Water energy is not our preferred energy here. Come on. Please. No. I probably should have gone from you before that. Call us to throw out an item and get one card closer to the wash energy, but we did not. So, in that, I guess that's fossil is kind of good. Because now, uh, if I were part with a rope, we can go into the fossil instead of an ice cube. But, yeah, I could put the water on. I don't think is I probably should put the water on the Drake or on the fossil, so I could start swinging with like Draco Vish if they were to have like a Dragonite. But seeing that they have Metal Energy in the discard pile, I think the probability of them having Dragonite is pretty low. So they're they concealed cards. They're not. They haven't put a single course yet. They have 25 cards left. There's a Quick Ball, other Rock Sand, or Sableye. So this is not great. I see moving that at the active. Power select, please no chorus. Out of Cramorant. Now again. So they're very, very close. They just need to, they just need two more, I think. Um, uh, yeah, three more. There's the chorus, so they just need one more, and then they can lost mine our poor ice cube. Is this where it ends? Wash energies have decided to hide themselves this game, which is not great when you need them early to put on your ice cube. And that metal energy definitely scares me that they're playing Amazing Raikou. And they could just snipe my my benched um, Ice Q, even if I do put a Wash Energy on it. So you do have to sort of draw up uh, quickly in this matchup, or things do start to fall apart a little bit. So they do get that, that save line and snipe my poor Ice Q. We need Wash Energy. Twin Energy is not what I wanted. So please, Wash Energy. Deck, come on. This is not very nice of you. 
a mysterious tail, find another shoe, and another shoe. No. Shoe again. Uh, I guess we, we keep this. It's up to you, Energy Lotto. You are the best, Energy Lotto. You earn a promotion. So will this boo shake. Thin it out of the deck. The long boat does not have a Ryko. Everything is going to be according to plan. Just how we drew it up once again. Everything fell in place. So, I say like boss Kramer and Zigzagoon, in which I would be very upset, but <laughs> hopefully not. So my opponent is very um, taking taking their sweet time to contemplate their current position. They will go for like conceal cards. So hopefully my my Marnie was not very nice to them and gave them a completely bricked down hand, but. See, there's a quick ball. But I don't know. Okay, it's Snorlax, which I guess Snorlax gust would be pretty bad. Okay, Chloris means no boss's orders, which is awesome. Or well, they went for a Kyogre playing sniped our two bench guys. That would be pretty sad. That would be very disappointing. What if just after all this they had Dragon anyway? That would be hilarious. <laughs> so there is Chloris taking them a little bit. I mean Lost the Ordinary Rod is pretty good for us. This is a crucial five cards for my opponent here. They're befuddled by this, these, these five cards. And they finally make their decision. Get, get into the second Kramer. And the Psychic Energy. Or what about after all this, they just had like Temple of Sinnoh or like Horn Rope or something. Horn Rope Boss. That would just be pretty funny. But they go for a, a Lost Mine. I'm gonna take out the active and put five on my fossil. Nope, six on the fossil, five in the mute, and then they wasted one ping on the ice cube. So I will grab the fossil, I suppose. And we'll uh, discard the, the fossil from play, put the Queen Energy on, net the active, and then start going for block phase. And as long as they don't have a Dragonite or Temple of Sinnoh, we should win this game. So hopefully they got nothing. Which they've gone through all their cards. They should know whether, whether they have, uh, or, we, or we should know that whether they have game or not, or even a chance to start putting some pressure on, on the ice cube, and then they just concede. So that's six in a row. Can we make it seven? We're 48 minutes in, so we just need, maybe we can get two quick games in and get this all the way to an eight game win streak. That'd be up. So. I'm happy how the deck's been performing so far. These have been some great games. But we got to show off the Ice Cube and the Drake Drake Wish portion of the deck. We got to show off how, despite it being a decently uh, uh, large combo that you need to pull off, it's definitely achievable between Chorus and Mew and Pokestop. This hand is not. It is a mulligan. Would have been very poor had we not mulligan. We open me with a pretty good hand. We have double fossil shoot and two gears. So, oh, Red, Red you lucky. So we're going to Red use once again. Quick ball. Oh no, we're against control. Well, win streak is over. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, control is probably our, one of our worst matchups. But as the nature of the video, we do not scoop until the bitter end. So. We'll gear to thin first. We'll gear once again. Marnie's solid. So I will angle shoe first. Do not need the penguin. And we get a couple energy cards, which is nice. So I'll bench our rare fossil, mysterious tail. Getting the boost shake is also nice. So I'll put the wash energy on and boost shake. So now it's protected from my Yuval Tulsa. Pretty good for us. We already need to work quickly in this matchup though because once our opponent gets to the Eldegoss loop there's very little that we can do because we're doing 120 a turn so two shooting Eldegoss which is bad news because they can just infinitely loop us forever until we deck out and unless we have some way to be infinite which we do not uh we we, we just lose so they're gonna be trying to get to the deck as fast as possible we're gonna be trying to be as annoying as possible the bird keeper back into the rest of lucky the other Snorlax is very annoying, but it is, um, it, d it does force him to commit resources to it, and that could be alright for us if they're having to commit 
uh, double turbos that they don't have for Elder Goss, which make it harder for them to ma maintain the, the combo. I accidentally hit fan there. <laughs> so, we will chorus, grab fan of waves, uh, net and Marnie. I will mysterious tail, grab the nets, and I'll net and Draco Vash and just start swinging with the hammer. And yell one would be disastrous, or flannery would be very bad. Both of those would just be horrible. So hopefully we do not see either of those. We gotta be careful about Echoing Horn, because like Echoing Horn, I guess we have nets, so Echoing Horn isn't the biggest of deals. But alright, they lost some two energies. Ha ah, yellow horn. Dang it. So and they have the energy on, on the lax. Yeah, pass. So I will net the energy off the, the Snorlax. Bench a backup. And this always hits heads. Yes, let's go! So we'll take the knockout. But the odds are not in our favor. We're going to start hitting, hitting tails, right? We have, to, we have to set up a backup. And this is where things are bad because they hit, the yellow horn gives them way more time to set up and gets through the deck to be able to use Eldegoss. We're eventually going to start hitting tails and be wasting turns. We're too short anyway because that 130 number is very awkward for us to get through. Um, conceal carding a turbo is pretty interesting. We do Thornton, the other. I think that's kind of a waste of a Thornton, in my opinion. So they're gonna sonar back. Ugh. I don't want to put this double tur or this twin down because then I'm susceptible to Veltal. But also, I am leaving it wide open for Sydney, so I probably should have attached it in hindsight. But you should never get Sydney. You, you just pre prepare for that, all right? <laughs> so there's a chorus of, yes, no Sydney, just how we, we planned it. I definitely should have, should have played it. Like, if they go into Yveltal, well, that's fine. I'm also, another energy, conceal carding another energy. Energy is one of the few cards in this deck, unless they're playing Silene, that is not infinite. So the special energies we cannot re retrieve, so our opponent will eventually run out of gas if they keep this up. Should I put that energy down, but. I did not, so we're not. We're not. Ah, Sydney, should have dropped it. Told you. Oh well, we move on. We just have to keep flipping heads on our hammer right now. So they get another attachment on that Snorlax. So the fan of waves will come in handy, and they find Sydney once again. So yeah, no energy is safe from this point forward. So we'll net out that energy and then hammer in again. Heads, let's go. Hammer in busted. Confusion is garbage. Oh no, we drew another energy again. Hopefully they do not play that Sydney. Okay, few. That's a chorus. Man, they put Sydney out of tilted. Because then we would have had only one twin left. Getting her vacuum and lost city, but those are pretty useless cards in this matchup. Snorlax once again finds an energy. There is Eldegoss, which. We could gust up and start having a fun time. Happy match back of Thornton will cape both Eldegoss and pass. So I am going to, all right, I'm gonna Ultra Ball. Dang it, I don't want to take the energy here. <laughs> now I'm susceptible to Sydney. So we will grab Dracovish. I'm going to put a wash on. I probably should have put the other energy because a Sydney would be pretty bad. Uh, we hit Tails, so hoping to, to put some pressure on them to force them to Eldegoss earlier than they wanted to, or they already had one double turbo in play, one down. So I was hoping that maybe they wouldn't be able to do it. And I could take a, a, a cheeky two prizes and maybe even be able to find my lost city and lost zone to El Eldegoss, which would be pretty amazing for us. Luckily, we did not get punished by Sydney. They find a capture for their Snorlax, and then just a pass. I will put the twin on the Dracovish. And I'm just gonna hammer and I'm gonna hold my fan. I don't know if that's Oh two in a row. Confusion too strong. Dang it. Welp. This trigger fish it might be going down to that Snorlax if they have a bird keeper or even attached to retreat. There's the bird keeper. So they're down to one card in deck, which is pretty awkward for them. Because this guy's gonna stay asleep in all likelihood. Yeah, he does. Only a 25% chance to wake up. So I could. I'm still gonna put the ha hammer and pr pressure on, but this might just force a net and they just lose these these resources. All right, good. If it, it, if it woke up, I would have generally been very frustrated. But 
good news. They do not. So they have to get into the Eldegoss, though. So this might force them to net and lose those energies, which would be awesome. We saved the, these Marnies, so we can hopefully try to bust that, that loop up. Uh, so they said Sydney, that's not going to be any good. So that means no Bird Keeper, though. Right, and they have to net, so that's awesome. Instead of putting the energies back in the deck because I fan, they just straight up lose them. So that's the best case scenario. They do have that other double turbo. Galar Mine isn't any big deal. It's another net up the Greninja. And now the Perugia Lucky, so they have the Elgast Loop established. So we just are going to have to um, have Marnie come through for us. So I'm just going to swing with Hammer, I think, and make him top deck. Either make him exhaust a supporter card trying to get there. Alright, they have a course, so they had to spend one of their supporter cards to uh, keep the loop up, which is what we wanted. So now we're going to Marnie and just hope that this sort of uh, forces an awkward hand for my opponent. Because we. I don't know if I should have evolved. Because now I'm. Um, a boss could slow us down a, a little bit. Alright, well, we don't get punished, which is lucky. But now they have a 17 card deck, which um, they with no Pokemon down, they guard their Radiant Greninja, so it might be hard for them to get into the deck and re-establish this loop. Of course, they are guaranteed to draw that Eldegoss, so they do have that course experiment. But the hope is that with them already being down two double turbos, that they, I guess they have the gun guaranteed off Marnie, so we just have to hope that with a 14 card deck, they can't find the double turbo again. So, we, all right, we have the, the lotto to find the twin, so then we will just hammer in for the knockout. And so now we just need a to miss twin energy. That would be best case scenario. All right, there's a quick ball for my opponent out. Finding Eldegoss, they do have a chorus, so that's bad. Hopefully it doesn't find one of their double turbos. They probably have two left. They're most likely playing four. And they can steal cards, that's in something. They have to spend more resources here to find it. Five cards left in Zach. Do they have it? No, they don't. They put the speed on the bench guy in his pass. So we can take this knockout with Hammer in. This kind of is awkward for my opponent because now they have to Thornton um, just to find that back of Eldegoss so once again to reestablish the loop. So this Marnie was uh, achieved exactly what we were hoping for to sort of disrupt their loop and make their lives a lot more difficult. So that's awesome. And we're probably gonna see a Thornton out the Radiant Greninja back to the Eldegoss and probably like an attachment and then a float up. But taking my point a moment here, they probably right, there's the double turbo. Now they find it. Well, and just a peony th this turn, so maybe they have a double turbo prized. That would definitely have made sense it, considering how they couldn't find it. They put a cape on the Greninja, just pass, which is definitely the smart play because it gives them one more turn of time because they uh, always tank th this hit. So definitely the correct play by my opponent. There's a course to get through the rest of the deck. Our opponent only has seven cards to work with here. They're quite, they had to thin quite a bit of it out to reestablish the loop after that Marnie. But now we are sort of back where we were. We just need our, our opponent doesn't need the Thornton though to reset up the loop, which they can't draw cards and Thornton in the same turn. So that's kind of our saving grace here. 120, and hopefully they cannot if it's like Eldegoss, that'd be worst case scenario. But maybe uh, they have the Thornton. So they need to have tw double turbo and Eldegoss. They should not have caped the active. That's one more bad card that they can draw, which is gr debilitating this situation. And they miss. So we do take that win. So thank you guys for watching. This has been Dracovish. I was really happy with those games. I was able to really show off how the deck can uh, perform at, at, at its peak. So that made me very happy that I was able to. I get those wins with both sides of the deck, with the Dracovish and the Ice Q. So, um, if you made it this far in the video, I thank you so much. Uh, and if you have any questions about the list, I'll, uh, please leave them in the comment section down below. As always, the PTC Joe import will be in the description below. And uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And this has been all of Blitzel. I'll catch you in the next one.